Hi everyone. In this video we'll deduce the values of the trigonometric functions for the most important acute angles 30, 45 and 60 degrees or if you prefer thinking in radians pi over 6, pi over 4 and pi over 3 radians. Are you ready? Let's go. We're going to fill out the table shown here. First we'll deduce the values of the trig functions for an angle of 45 degrees. To do this we'll start with a square of side 1. Now we'll draw a diagonal to produce two right triangles. Let's focus on the one on the right. Notice that we got this angle by dividing a 90 degree angle into two equal parts. So each measures 45 degrees. Now we'll calculate the length of the hypotenuse, which we'll call h. Because we're dealing with a right triangle, we can use Pythagoras' theorem. The hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, which in this case is 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is equal to 2. And if h squared is 2, then h must be plus or minus the square root of 2. But remember, h is a length so it has to be positive. So we obtain that h is the square root of 2, and we'll show this on our triangle. Remember that for an acute angle of a right triangle, its sine is the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse, and its cosine is the length of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Finally, the tangent is the sine divided by the cosine of the angle. The angle we're dealing with here is 45 degrees. Its sine is the length of its opposite side, which is 1, over the length of its hypotenuse, which is the square root of 2. There's a root in the denominator, so we can rationalize by multiplying the top and bottom by root 2, giving root 2 over 2. The cosine of 45 degrees is the adjacent side 1 divided by the hypotenuse, again root 2, giving us the same as before root 2 over 2. We'll put these in the table along with the tangent of 45 degrees. Tangent is sine over cosine and since these are equal the result is 1. Now let's calculate the value of the trig ratios for 30 degrees and 60 degrees. To do this we'll draw an equilateral triangle of side 1. The angles are all equal so because their sum is 180 degrees, each of them must be 60 degrees. We'll draw a line that bisects one of the angles to produce two right triangles. And let's focus on the one on the right. Notice that one of the angles is also an angle of the original triangle and so must be 60 degrees. The other acute angle is half of this and so must be 30 degrees. Now for the sides. This one's from the original triangle, and so has a length of 1. And this one is half the length of the original, and so must measure a half. Now let's calculate the length of this side, which we'll call x, applying Pythagoras' theorem. Again, the square of this side, half squared, plus the square of x, x squared, is equal to the hypotenuse squared, 1 squared. So we have a half squared, which is a quarter, plus x squared is equal to 1 squared, which is 1. Rearranging gives x squared equals 1 minus a quarter, which is 3 quarters. Taking the square root of both sides, x equals plus or minus the square root of 3 quarters. But remember, again, x is a length, so it must be positive. Therefore, x equals root 3 quarters, or root 3 over 2. We'll write this in our triangle. Now consider the angle of 60 degrees. The sine of 60 degrees is the opposite side, root 3 over 2, divided by the hypotenuse 1, which is simply root 3 over 2. The cosine of 60 degrees is the adjacent side, a half, divided by the hypotenuse 1, which is a half. We'll write these in the table. 
The tangent sine over cosine is root 3 over 2 divided by a half, which simplifies to root 3. Finally, for the angle 30 degrees, its sine is the opposite side a half divided by the hypotenuse 1, which is simply a half. And the cosine of 30 degrees is the adjacent side, which is root 3 over 2 divided by the hypotenuse, again 1, which simplifies to root 3 over 2. And we'll add these results to the table. The tangent of 30 degrees, sine over cosine, comes out to be, when simplified, 1 over root 3, or if we rationalise the denominator, root 3 over 3. In a future video, we'll look at a trick for getting these trigonometric ratios. But a trick is a trick, and what we've done here is real maths. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you again soon.